All right, welcome to this deep dive. Um, we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving and, you know, family dynamics. You're probably already kind of thinking about it. Yeah. And especially, you mentioned, you know, neurodiversity being a factor this year. Mm -hmm. So really smart of you to send over all those articles from Cheap ABA. Yeah. So we're going to pull out some of those uh, best strategies, you know, so you can have a really good Thanksgiving. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about some self-advocacy tips, accommodations, and we'll touch on that whole normal thing. Right. You know, and how normal is kind of a myth. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. Well, I mean, the holidays are, you know, they can be a little bit anxiety inducing for anybody. But for people who are neurodivergent, it can be, like you said, like there's all these social expectations and it's even more mm -hmm. difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. Just imagine walking into a room and you've got all these relatives yeah. and uh, they're all expecting you to interact in a certain way. Uh -huh. It's like you're trying to figure out a code or something. And And that's where those cheap ABA articles really kind of hit the nail on the head. They yeah. talk about this idea that it's not about anyone being difficult. Yeah. You know, it's really about yeah. this disconnect between what's kind of the expected social behavior, you know, the script, and how neurodivergent people just experience the world. It's like, Absolutely. Instead of like the old square peg round hole thing, Yeah. maybe it's like you have the instruction manual, but it's in a totally different language. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. The differences, like in terms of social cognition, can be so profound. I mean, you think about it, a lot of autistic people, they excel at pattern recognition, logical thinking, but then they come up against these nuances of social interaction with all those unwritten rules, you know? It's a lot. Yeah, and I think, too, that can lead to a lot of emotional baggage, you know? Oh, yeah. It's not just like, oh, this is awkward. Mm -hmm. It's like real anxiety. Yeah frustration and even like shame sometimes absolutely feeling like i'm constantly failing this test yeah yeah like what am i doing wrong exactly and that's why self-advocacy is so huge you know yeah. it's not about fix yourself right it's about giving you the tools to deal with all of this and you know cheap aba they have these three strategies mm -hmm. the first one is communicate Okay. Don't just suffer in silence, you know. If you need a quiet space, yep. if you need to take a break from all the people, just tell your family. I think that's such a good point because it's easy to think like, oh, they should know. Right. But sometimes just being direct can make such a difference. Totally. And the second one is all about boundaries. And I know that one. Well, that's a tough one. Yeah, it can be tough. Yeah. But setting boundaries, it's not being selfish. Right. It's about looking after yourself. And it can be as simple as, you know, excuse me for a minute, I need to go to another room mm -hmm. just to recharge. Think of it as like a strategic retreat yeah. so you can come back and actually engage, you know? Yeah, so not like storming off in a huff. No. But more like, okay, just need a minute. Exactly, a graceful exit. I like that. And then the last one that Cheap ABA talks about is being assertive. Okay. And this isn't about, you know, being aggressive. Right. But it's about communicating what you need, but clearly and confidently like mm -hmm. you could say hey i'm feeling kind of overwhelmed right now i need a few minutes of quiet time i love those tips you know what i mean it's like you go from feeling powerless yeah. to like okay i can handle this totally and speaking of handling things the articles also talk about accommodations and this is where i think it gets really interesting yeah for sure and it's not about getting special treatment or anything right. it's about making things accessible so everyone enjoys themselves right yeah one example they give in cheap aba is visual schedules Imagine if you had like a picture guide to what's happening that day. Oh, okay. It can reduce uncertainty, help people plan, especially people who do well with predictability. It's like a roadmap for the day. Yeah, exactly. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. And they also talk about social stories. Yeah. Which I think is fascinating. Yeah, huh? It's like having a little cheat sheet for social situations. Exactly. Imagine you're going to a Thanksgiving dinner for the first time. Oh. A social story can walk you through everything that's going to happen, like from when you say hello and people introduce themselves to how to act at dinner to what people usually talk about. Right. It helps decode all the unspoken rules yeah. that go with being social. Totally. Totally. It's like a little like a little instruction manual. Like, yeah. OK, this is what we do now. Yeah. This is how you handle this. Exactly. And it's not just visuals, you know. Right. Cheap ABA talks about using like pictures or symbols uh -huh. to help people communicate, especially when it's noisy. Right. And, you know, even for people who aren't neurodivergent, yeah. it can be hard to hear in those situations. That's so imagine right. if you in. already process sound differently. Yeah, it's like a whole other layer of difficulty. So having those other ways to communicate 
is so helpful. Yeah. It's like recognizing that we don't all communicate the same way. Right. And that's like a perfect lead in to what I think is like the main takeaway here. Yeah. Normal is a myth, you know. Right. Like this idea that there's just one right way to experience the world, especially socially. Yeah. It's just not true. No. And embracing neurodiversity means accepting that we all yeah. experience and interact with the world in our own ways. Mm. And those differences, they aren't bad things, you know? Right. They're just differences. Exactly. Just variations. And you're not the only one feeling this way. I yeah. mean, a lot of people sure. struggle with these things, you know? So we've talked about those expectations, self-advocacy, the accommodations. Mm -hmm. You've got all this knowledge now. But like they say, you know, knowledge without action right. is kind of like a Thanksgiving turkey without stuffing. Exactly. you got to put it to use. Not very exciting. No, not at all. So I love that you're not just like reading these articles. Right. You're really trying to like get ready for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and make it good for you and everyone around you. So if you could pick one thing, mm -hmm. one little change you could make this Thanksgiving, what would it be? Hmm. That's a good question. I think for me, it would be to talk about accommodations before Thanksgiving even happens. Oh. Like check in with everyone beforehand. Like a comfort level RSVP. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to be a big formal thing, just ah. a quick text or email. Yeah. You could say something like, hey, just wanted to see if there's anything we can do to make Thanksgiving more comfortable for everyone. Any sensory issues we should know about. Would anyone like a quiet space or some breaks from the crowd? That's so smart yeah. because then people don't feel like they're being demanding <laughs> exactly. or like they're a problem or something. Yeah. It just opens the door for everyone to say what they need. Exactly. Right. It makes it more inclusive right from the start. Yeah. And I bet it also helps prevent like those meltdowns. Oh, absolutely. Or shutdowns yeah. like, that can happen when someone's overwhelmed. For sure. It's about preventing the problem. Right. Being proactive. Exactly. Okay. So let's say someone says, yeah, my son. Loud noises are really hard for him. Mm. It would be great if he had a place to go if it gets too much. Yeah. What could you do in that situation? Oh, there's tons of things you could do. It depends on, you know, yeah. the person in your house. But right. you could pick a room, like a guest room or a den, yeah. and make it the quiet space. Mm -hmm. Make it comfy, no distractions. Maybe put some headphones in there oh, or yeah. fidget toys, okay. a weighted blanket, things like that. Like a little sanctuary in the middle of the chaos. Exactly. It gives them a place to calm down. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be just for one person. That's a good point. You know, <laughs> I've also heard of families having like a quiet time yeah. during Thanksgiving where everyone mm. neurodivergent or not can just take a break if they need to. Yeah. I love that idea. Then it's normal to need a break. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't single anyone out. Yeah. You could say, OK, everyone, 15 minute break to recharge before dessert. I can just feel everyone relaxing already. Right. It shows that. Even little changes can make a big difference. You know, it's not about changing Thanksgiving. Right. It's about making it better for everyone. Yeah, exactly. More accessible. And a lot of times th these things, yeah. they're good for everyone, not just neurodivergent people. Right. Like who doesn't need a break sometimes? Exactly. From all the talking and the noise. Yeah, for sure. So it's about being aware of those needs mm -hmm. and creating a better experience. Yeah. And Thanksgiving is about. Yeah you know, family, making memories. It's not just about the food. Totally, totally. You know, and that brings us back to like the whole point of Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's not just about the food, right? It's yeah. about connecting and yeah. gratitude. So any other little nuggets of wisdom? Oh, yeah. From TPABA before Absolutely. we wrap things up? Sure. One thing they really stressed was how tough those social expectations can be for neurodivergent people. Okay. Like something that might bug you a little bit could be super stressful for someone else. It's like that saying, right? Walk a mile in someone's shoes. Exactly. So try to have empathy, you know? Yeah. If someone seems withdrawn or overwhelmed, don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. Just offer support. Right. Give them space. And remember that communication isn't always words, right? No, for sure. Some people say exactly what they need. And some people show you through their behavior. Yeah. So pay attention to those little things like body language, facial expressions. Yeah. And if you're not sure what's going on, just ask. That's good advice for any relationship, I think. Absolutely. It's all about being open. Yeah. And making sure everyone feels like they can say what they need. So you don't have to be like an expert in autism. Right. To be a good friend or family member. And just be willing to listen, learn, and adapt. That's all it takes. Now, with all this talk about accommodations. Right. Remember, Thanksgiving is about having fun too, you know? 
Yeah, don't forget to celebrate. It's about being together, mm -hmm. sharing a meal. And Cheat ABA had this really interesting idea about, like, shifting how we see differences. Oh, okay. What if instead of thinking of them as problems, yeah. we thought of them as opportunities? I like that. Yeah. So instead of trying to make everyone fit in the same box, exactly. we embrace what makes everyone unique. Yeah. Let's make Thanksgiving about everyone being their true selves. Who knows? Maybe we'll even find new ways of connecting and celebrating that we never thought of before. Right. No, that's a Thanksgiving to look forward to. And that's what this whole deep dive was about, you know? Yeah. Giving you the knowledge. The tools. Yeah, the tools to make that happen. Well, Lister, it sounds like you're going into this Thanksgiving with a plan. Yeah, you got this. Thanks for diving in with us. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.